Hey everyone, this is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and uh, uh, welcome back to another episode of C++ Crash Course. And in this episode, we're going to continue our look into the C++11 standard, and that's with the new types of for loops that were uh, introduced that can make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and check that out. So we'll look at new for loops, and then new for loops.cpp. So here we'll only include two things, IO stream for some printing, and then vector um, you know, to have something to store in. So, you know, these new for loops, uh, Python uh, specifically has a pretty neat feature, a pretty nice feature, which is you can specify a for loop such as, you know, if you have a list that has a bunch of elements in it, you can say for item in uh, list, you can, you know, I will be set to whatever other item is in the list, right? So instead of having to index into a list, I is just automatically set to it. So uh, C++ introduced this um, into these for each style loops uh, with a format of say you know int i and then we'll have some you know list of elements over here so we'll have a colon between it and then a list of elements right so um, I will get set to you know in order these elements every iteration of the list so in the first iteration I will be one second iteration I will be two third iteration I will be three and so we'll go ahead and just print it out now, you know, this is a pretty neat feature. So, uh, you know, first we'll show it off just with this simple example, uh, but then we'll, we'll do a little more, you know, interesting of an example where we'll have, uh, we'll have a vector, right? And we'll just fill it with some six random numbers, right? And so there'll be random numbers between zero and a hundred, uh, non-inclusive. And so we'll print out, you know, what each of the numbers are, and then we can do, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and use the auto like we saw in the last video to get kind of an implicit type. And so what we'll do is we'll set i, uh, and we'll do this by reference, right? So if we update the value of i, this updates the value in the vector itself. So uh, here we have uh, int vector. And so all we need to do is pass in auto, or all we need to do is uh, for this for loop is do auto and i and then colon int vector, and we will automatically go over the entire, um, every element inside of the vector. We don't need to do any kind of, you know, for int i equals zero, i is less than int vector dot size, i plus plus. We don't need to do that, so it'll automatically uh, happen. And then again, this i will be set to whatever integer value is at a specific position inside of that loop. And so we'll go ahead and just update it, right? So we'll add one to every single position inside of uh, int vector. And we'll go ahead and print that out down here. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll do G++. Again, we're using the C++11 standard. So we can specify a standard using dash std equals C++11. Then we can, we'll do dash O, our output will be new for loops, and then new for loops.cpp, right? And then we'll go ahead and compile this, and let's run it. So here we have, you know, it sees, you know, you see it went over every single element in that list, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, you know, for an arbitrarily sized vector that we just, you know, init uh, initialized with some random numbers, we got, you know, we, we've initialized it with 83, 86, 77, 15, 93, and 35. And then with that kind of for each loop, similar to Python, we were able to update each of these numbers, right? Right. And so, you know, we didn't have to do, like I said, any bounds checking or anything. It's, it's it, like I said, it's like a for each loop. So for each element inside of that vector. And we could do this with more complex data types too. So we could do this with, you know, for each, uh, maybe we have an array of, you know, some kind of struct or some kind of object, right? We could, you know, do a for, for each type loop um, for, for something like that. It doesn't just have to be for integers or for uh, doubles. And so that's that can be really convenient, uh, and it's a it's a way to help improve programmability of C++. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Um, feel free to go to github.com slash coffee before arch. And then in this C++ crash course repository, we've got all the code, our links to all the videos and all the code for these videos. So we looked at uh, the standard library and the new for loops. And here we've got the example that we looked at today. Also, um, in the coming days, there'll be, you know, written tutorials for each of these videos. So uh, that'll be in that readme as well. So here's an example of one that is for the uh, Hello World example. So 
As always, though, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.